house, and it's the weekend, and we getting ready for a big thing in college football. I got my boy, the Mad Hatter. I got my boy, Dr. Dan, with me. What's up, fellas? Yo, what's going on, guys? How you doing? Dr. Dan is back. I am back, and I'm like a little kid that keeps touching the stove, man. And college <laughs> football is that stove. I'm telling you guys, if, you, if you've been listening to me for the last three weeks, and you've been fading all my college football plays, you're like a millionaire. You're laughing you're like right now. You're on a man. French Riviera fading Disney. Fade the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> we come for, back those on don't normally, for those of you who don't normally listen to baseball season, that is obviously my forte. College football is a passion, but it is one that is becoming very expensive. Oh, all good, well, man. I want you to win ways today, Doc, because we got a whole plate, <laughs> a whole plate. Of yes. good stuff to get involved with. We just gonna go real easy. <laughs> just, just hang with your boy to dream. <laughs> That's it, dream. Congratulations <laughs> on nasty Iowa yesterday emerging. Oh, son, I told you Iowa was gonna handle their business. That was my play of the day. I really liked Iowa. Uh, guys, beware of this Iowa team. I know they don't do it in impressive fashion. No, nope. I hear you. However, both sides of the ball. They're as solid as any of the other four teams in the top four. Well, I'll, 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 I'll take a little bit away. The defense isn't as good as uh, Alabama, but the offense is way better than Alabama as far as I'm concerned. So uh, don't discount this Iowa team. Um, they are they are a problem. Yeah. Yeah, they seem to, to to win in, you know, I mean, not so. it wasn't impressive fashion, no, but they, they no. but it was never in question, though. The game, it you never, never really. All that matters. Like, if you saw the 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 um the pick six that they had on the line with the heavy, oh yeah yeah I saw <laughs> that yeah yep. that was so dope a play. I know my man like three twenty six eight bats the ball up in the air and he can keep his neck held in that position long enough to come down with the ball and run it into the end zone. Big ups to him. He got to be feeling himself this morning. Oh of course man, and they are they eleven just and zero. Had to survive the Sports Illustrated curse. Yeah, definitely, man. <laughs> they are 11 and 0 right now. The Iowa Hawkeyes and uh, looking forward to the Big Ten championship. And uh, they're going to be uh, facing the winner of. Let's see if it's Michigan State. If they win today, if they beat Penn State, they'll be facing Sparty. And if Michigan State loses, they'll be facing the winner of the Ohio State University, who goes into Ann Arbor, Michigan today to play the Michigan Wolverines, guys. All right, now real quick, we got to talk about this. All right. Last night, monsoon type situation. Dr. Dizzle, take it away. Talk to me about the Baylor game. Oh my God. <laughs> um, Baylor should have won that game. You know, you threw everything. Look, I mean, that, that was one of the craziest games I ever watched. I mean, and since HD has been invented, there hasn't been a game that I've really been watching where the rain has really affected how you can see it on TV. And last night, look, I got to give them a lot of credit for going out and playing football. And you got the third string out there for Baylor, who, you know, I didn't think was going to be as bad. But I think in the fourth quarter, what, he was like six for 18 with like 57 yards. No one could throw the ball. Look, that game was decided in the first overtime after Baylor scored. Yep. I thought they had that game done. I thought that game was a wrap. You're looking at a Baylor win, a little bit of salvage. You're looking at a one and two day for me. Okay. And then, you know, the dumbest pass interference call. You got a freshman out there just barreling into a dude that's not going to get, I mean, he's so tightly covered anyway that you're not going to fit the ball in there. And then obviously they give up the touchdown, Um, you know, and then on fourth and one, thank God, you know, you're sitting there. Thank God you get the timeout call because they didn't make it on the QB sneak. You see TCU stack the box. You got 11 guys up the middle through the A-gap and the B-gap, so you're saying, okay, just boot out, pitch it out, run an option, do something. No, let's run it up the middle and get stuffed. Yep. Terrible coaching, you know, look, in a game like that, the better coach is going to win, and I guess TCU has the better coach. Um, you know, and I, I mean, the, the only other takeaway from that game, other than Baylor just absolutely choke showing um, that whole thing away, is that you know the TCU quarterback might want to might want to take a seat? Um, you know he he did not look he did not look healthy. He didn't look good through that game, and um, he's a great player, so you don't want to see him ruin his prospects. Well, that's their uh, that's probably their last game until the bowl game, man. Because neither one of these teams are alive now for yeah. the playoff, so they're both they both have two losses, both no chance of winning the Big Twelve championship. So it comes down 
to the game in Bedlam today with Oklahoma versus Oklahoma State. And the winner of that is the Big 12 champion. And possibly alive for the playoffs, man. I mean, Oklahoma for sure. Not so sure about Oklahoma State, but, you know, we could have the conversation, man. Maybe a bunch of teams lose. I mean, Baylor's already done. I believe a bunch. I believe we're going to have a bunch of surprises today. You think so, huh? I I believe surprises are in order for today. Surprises? I think our first surprise, we can look at the Iron Bowl. The Iron Bowl. Let's, oh. let's, 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 let's definitely go there. Oh, because uh, you know what? Dan's no. been calling this for a while. And, I'm, not, uh, I'm not. Look, guys, and I just want to say, there's no way I'm betting this. But I've been calling this for three weeks that Auburn will win the Iron Bowl. Oh, my God. I, I, I have to highly disagree with Doctor, you on that one. Hey, you guys <laughs> win the Iron Bowl. 75 to 3 Alabama. Oh. I'm, ready to, I'm ready to go bottle of Ciroc back. Yes. <laughs> no, what am I, I going to do? I mean, you want to give me, you want to give me, what's the number on that game? And I'll consider it. But, um, now you want to well, do I mean, numbers, but, but you want to do the, but you want to do the adjusted line with the, <laughs> with Vegas, you're going for the adjusted line, but you want numbers with me. I'll give you the adjusted line. <laughs> you can have Auburn, you can have Auburn minus two touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, hey, I, I think my thing is, is there's every good chance that Alabama will blow them out and it's just going to be another one of those. But if this game is somewhat close late, I I, th- I just I don't know, man. I mean, this dude, is... dude, I know. I love you to death. I, I got it. I, I I got to tell you, out of all the surprises that are possible today, that one is like impossible. Yeah. Would you have ever said that Texas was going to beat Oklahoma? Um, no. Right. So I'm just saying these rivalry games, and you've seen it all year, all the time. I mean. I'm just saying it's like a different level, and who knows? I mean, the Auburn kids, this is like their buildup. You know how college kids are. I mean, once Auburn is basically eliminated from everything, they're like, all right, we just got to wait till we play Alabama. Yeah. Auburn so, is just so they bad, are so though. Bad. Yep. Yep. I, I mean, they are as bad as it gets. At least with Texas, I'll give, I'll give, I'll three. give Texas had the dynamic. They got the dynamic of a of a of a quarterback, uh, ath- an athletic, talented quarterback that is hard to contain. So, if it, 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 anytime you got a running quarterback, it always has, it proves you know fits for a defense. But this Auburn team, dude. Oh my God! Man. I know, and and look, why why I'm obviously not putting any money or anything else is it's also a little bit, it's a little bit of a heart play. I just I just want to see Alabama get knocked out. Dan, I, I told the dream this the, the other week, and um, you know somebody told me this, and I think you need to lift, listen to it and live by it. Sometimes your wallet is closer to your heart than your brain. Oh well, that's why the wallet's not going out <laughs> at all, at all. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I I think with rivalry games, anything can happen. I look, Alabama has a, a 90% chance to win this game. You could you could look at a million different ways they can win this game, and the only way that Auburn wins this game is you know win turnovers and have some crazy stuff happen. Um, I'm, I just wouldn't be surprised. I mean, the Iron Bowl has gone crazy before. Well, the Iron Bowl is one of the most heated rivalries, I think, in college football. One of them. Definitely. One of them. So uh, you're looking at uh, Auburn is You a- know my problem with a rivalry, though? I'm going to go into this. A rivalry is a rivalry if both teams to me are relevant. Okay. But they've both been relevant in recent No, no, years. no doubt. Been relevant. But, like, right now, these two teams are so far apart as far as I'm concerned that it's like Bama's just, like, sitting over there. You know, it's like it's like the heavyweight boxer fighting the featherweight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, all right. No, you're, like, you're 100%. You're you know what 100. I mean? Like, you're coming in with the featherweight, comes in, you know. It's like me playing with my kids. You know, you're playing pity pad. I say, okay, stop, stop. All right, stop, stop. And then finally, I just, okay, body slam them real quick you know what i'm saying or something <laughs> crazy to show that i'm way more powerful and then it's over it just this game right here just doesn't have that makeup because this the separation to me is just so far yeah of course auburn's gonna want to play and david and goliath the want to take them out and you're gonna have you know try be gunning for it but my thing is and like i say it all the time emotions all that emotion all that stuff lasts about two snaps. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? After oh, two, 
After two snaps, then the other cats on the other side of the line that's been lifting 400 pounds in the gym and been doing this and that, then they start hitting you, and those hits come to fruition. You're like, whoa. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This front four is good. Yeah, they're very good. They're I'm not very saying good. you're wrong. and I mean, you know, it is what it is. But uh, it's not like, no, I mean, this is, it's still not like, you know, Division One playing a Division Three or Division no, right. yeah, play. Right, yeah. Right. You know, yeah. and um, look. Auburn is a is a terrible team. I just think that crazy things happen in these types of games. Auburn's ranked number 86th as far as offense is concerned in yards mm. per game, and Alabama is the number three defense in all of the land, bro. So be very careful with that, Dan. There's nothing Auburn. Oh, man. Well, we got to, you know what? Hey, we got to talk about, we, you keep know what? Keep hope alive. Keep hope alive, man. We got to talk about the big game in Ann Arbor in about two hours from now, and that's oh, the yeah. Ohio State University, who is 10 and 10-1, 10-1, moving into number 10. 10, Michigan, who is nine and two and six and one in the Big Ten, Ohio State is actually minus one in this game. This guy, this line is going everywhere, man. It was uh, Ohio everywhere. State minus three, then it was Michigan minus three. Now it's back. It was a pick 'em, and now it's Ohio State minus one with an under over of forty seven points. Ohio State favored kind of bothers me a little bit in this particular game. Ezekiel Elliott Dream will be in uniform and be out there, just so you know. Um, that bothers me. Yeah, man, just... Uh, <laughs> you got to bench him for at least a why quarter. Is that, why is that bothering you, Dan? I, I just feel like, you know, um, you come out and say something when you win, fine. You want to come out and talk when you win? Um, you want to pull your coach aside and say something, but your coach did win a national championship last year, no matter what the circumstances were. Um, I, I would, if I was the coach, I would uh, show that no one's bigger than the team. I'm not saying you bench him the whole game, but I would bench him for the first quarter. Michigan, See, my, go ahead. Go ahead. My, my thing, and I said this last night on Houston Radio, I, I just feel that there's another, there's another behind-the-scenes thing going on here. Um, I think that, you know, Urban Meyer, seriously narcissistic, um, and he really wants most of the credit for his program doing well. Um, he doesn't want to lean on one to two or even three athletes. You have two actual incredible talent, three incredible talents, JT Barrett, Cardell Jones, um, and Ezekiel Elliott. And he didn't want any of them basically – to, to, sh- to have the limelight. It's, this, this is my opinion. None of them have the limelight. All the limelight would be on him and his program and what he was able to do. Hence the play calling. Hence the struggling every week of this team. Okay? And I think that's a little bit of that aggravation that you heard come out of Ezekiel's mouth. Now, do I think it's right for him to do that? No, not at all. But Because uh, you don't do that. But I do think that there's some behind-the-scenes tinkering with the team that a lot of the kids are scratching their head. Like, like, what's this guy doing? You know what I mean? Why isn't he letting me play? Why isn't he letting us do it? Because any other team these guys are on, they're, it's like no question they're playing. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And they're, and they're going to use them to the best of their abilities. Yeah, Urban's tinkering with them, okay, to – so, so that none of them have oh, the whole limelight. You know what I mean? In the limelight. No, more- I, I, I see. I, I definitely see where you're coming from. Okay. To you know, to a point. I, I'm not. Yeah. Okay. It, that it's just. I mean, I could definitely see him being narcissistic and egotistical. I think to be a head coach, you kind of have to be. Uh, but you know, hey, it, it is what it is. I'm not the coach. He can do whatever he wants with his team. But for that reason. I mean, and I think both these coaches are probably asses. I mean, that, let's just tell it like it is. I mean, Harbaugh and Meyer, it's like the jackass coach bowl. Yeah. Um, I think Michigan is probably going to win this game. You know, you know what? what my thing is, too, though, is, like, I get wanting to do that, but, like, week three, when you're struggling, right? okay, like Ohio State was, because I always struggled, like, the first, you know, struggle with booty teams. At some point, you got to say, okay, listen, I need to fall back from the tinkering and let my stars go go get it. You know what I mean? You got to fall back and let them go get it. And I don't think that he ever relinquished the reign and let them go do their thing like he should have. Um, and this particular matchup, I don't like either side. I lean Michigan, but after yeah. thinking about it and going over it a hundred times in my head, I really like the under. Yeah, the under's great, man. I mean, both teams are in the top ten defensively. I really and like the under. Ohio State really doesn't get any credit for that. 
I never you never hear that they're number they're number eight in def in total defense. Because everybody's too football. busy hating on their offense. Yeah, right. And um, you know, Michigan is obviously number two, letting up two hundred and sixty three yards per game, and the total in this game dream is uh, forty seven points. So maybe you see like a uh, you know nine to three at half, something like that. You know what I mean? Who who knows? No. But for the uh, most part, you know, I, 47 I points seems like a lot of points. Other way. You like the over, huh, Dan? I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not obviously not playing it, but I, I just think that Michigan lately, you got to remember, um, they've let up some points, you know, to Indiana. They've let up some points to Minnesota. Yeah, definitely. Um, As of you late. know, I, I just. I could see the I, – I actually – and this might be a little crazy – a first half under and an over for the game because I think that it's going to be very much a uh, defensive first half. A, a lot of, you know, kind of feeling each other out, things like that, seeing what you can do. But I think then the second half will get, will get very lively. All right. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. Do remember that Michigan led up those points to Indiana and to – um um to Penn State, and to Minnesota on the road. Yeah. Um, at home, Michigan, 31 nothing to BYU. Yep. Oregon State, 31-35-7. UNLV, 28-7. Uh, Northwestern, 38-0. Uh, so keep in mind that. No, they, I know, that, but if you look at like the Michigan State game, and Grant, that was like a, a really fluky game. That's kind of That's kind of like the blueprint I have for this. So I think that 49 number, if I was going to do anything, I would probably get it down seven points and take the over. You right. get down like 42, or if you want, get it up to 56 and take and the over. And it was so much being on the line, so much being on the line with this game. I think they're going to be a little bit tentative and a little bit tight. Uh, it'll be playing a pretty much of a game of field position. And we know that Ohio State doesn't tend to blow anybody out. No. Um, That's and- why I think the first half, you're exactly right. But then I think the second half turns to like punch, counter punch. Got okay. it. Got it. All right, Dream. So, um, <clears throat> so I think all three of us are, well, I'm leaning Michigan. I don't yep. know if I'm going to get involved in it. Dan, you're leaning Michigan as well. I'm leaning, Dream, but you're I'm leaning not the under. Involved. Okay. Um, as far as the next game, Dream, I'm going to let you pick one off the board that you feel it, man. Uh-oh. What you got? I'll get a, get a board pick. Yes. Oh, let's see. I'm going to give you guys an earlier game, um, one that's on my radar. I, I still haven't quite, quite made up my mind yet um, which direction I'm going um, as far as if I'm gonna if I'm gonna play with the number and how I'm gonna do it, but you got Indiana coming into Purdue. This Indiana team of late has really been playing at a pretty you know been playing good football. Yeah. Um. I like what they did a couple of weeks ago. Um. And I like them coming into Purdue. I don't like Purdue's defense at all. I think the defense has been just pretty putrid. The only issue that I have with this game is obviously it's a road team. I don't like road teams, especially in college football. It's very rough to win on the road, um, but I am slightly leaning this Indiana team. I like Indiana to go in and beat Purdue. I just have to figure out what I'm going to do with the numbers that I haven't quite figured out yet. Uh, whether it's going to be a teaser where I'm going to try to get Indiana with like a couple of points or I'm just going to get them down uh, to under a field goal. I'm, I'm in that direction. Uh- but I mean, if I was you, Dream, I, the only reason, if I was going to play it, which I'm not, because I would have to get them plus points. I think they'll probably win, but the, the problem I have with them is they play up and down in the competition. Yeah, okay. You know, they're one yep. of those teams that when they, you know, when they got to go play Ohio State or Michigan or something, they're all about it. They're all into the game. You know, their guys are trying to roll. But, you know, when they play a team like a Purdue, you get a little nervous about them. So that that's my trepidation with it. Got it. Got it. Well, Purdue doesn't have that stellar of an offense. you got to remember that. Indiana has the 120th ranked defense in all of college football dreams. So just uh, keep that in the back of your brain, brother. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, the Hoosiers, this would be, if they win this game, though, this is a gimme bowl game because – from what I have um, heard and been told is that you're going to actually have some five and seven teams that have to get a bowl game because there, you know, there's 80 bowl games yep. or 40 bowl games, so you need 80 teams. So if if Indiana wins this game, which I think they will, they punch their ticket. They'll be a six and six team, you know, out of that conference, they'll get in. You think so, huh, Dan? I, I know so. All right, sounds if, good. If they, if it's a win, there they get a bowl game. All right. Uh, Dan, I'm going to let you pick one off the board, man. Which one are you looking at as far as 
the earliest game that you're feeling so yeah, far. Yeah, I got a nooner that I that I have locked in. A we, nooner. All, we all know we all love a good nooner. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes, definitely. But um, look, I'm I'm rolling here with West Virginia minus the 14. West Virginia minus 14. Um, you know, West Virginia coming off a road win, obviously at Kansas, 49 nothing the week before. Beat Texas 38 20 at home. Uh, West Virginia is a very good home team. Their record at six and four, it doesn't belie how good they actually are. I mean, you're talking about a team lost uh, on the road to Oklahoma, Baylor, and TCU when all those teams were healthy. You know, in that one home loss to Oklahoma State where they really hung in there yep. against what you know is one of the better offenses in the country. Um, Iowa State, especially on the road. It, I mean, look, you're talking about three and state, three and eight Iowa State team. They've lost three in a row. Yep. Um, smoked by Oklahoma. Smoked. Uh, well, they lost at home to Oklahoma State, close, and they lost last week at Kansas State, close. Um, no chance for a bowl game for them. Nothing really to play for. Their coaches were fired this week. Uh, you know, on top of West Virginia's pretty good offense, I, I got to say that I think they win this game by three touchdowns. Oh, so you're giving the fourteen? I am. Wow, interesting. I am. Dream, any thoughts on West Virginia, kid? Yeah, I kind of like West Virginia. Um, I think West Virginia is a potent team. I just don't know that I can give out the 14 points. Um, I do think that West Virginia gets the win. Um, I, the Cyclone team can be pesty. They can be a little bit pesty. Yes, they, could, they, could, the they could score. They, they know how to score points. Yeah, yeah. But I agree with Dan. It is more at home of a kind of thing for them. Um... I can't do the 14, though. I yeah. can't. Yeah, I can't do the 14, but I like them. I can't do the 14. Can't do the 14. Okay, man. So uh, moving on to something that I'm going to select. I'm going to jump into the top 25, and we're going to talk about a 330 game that is kind of on my radar here. And I know it's going to be a stomach ache, guys. It's an in-state rivalry, but I think the better team is North Carolina. And number 14, North Carolina, is 10-1, and 7-0 in the ACC going into NC State, who is 7-4 and 3-4 and and in the ACC. North Carolina minus 4 with an under-over of 67 points. Uh, guys, you know what? I'm feeling North Carolina to continue their winning ways, to go in there, win this game. You know, if I'm going to do the point spread, it'll be down to two and a half. I don't like that nasty four points. And I think uh, North Carolina emerges in a stomach ache game. Um, I've seen NC State quite a bit of times this year. Dan, you and I have, um, you know, kind of gotten bit up by them a little bit this year. Yep. Um, that defense, you know, was was one of the top ten originally and now has fallen down. Uh, I want to say that they're down. Let me just take a look at uh, NC State's defense real quick. They've given up. They've, I mean, I know they've given up, I think, almost 80 points in the last two weeks. Yeah, right. right. And, uh, you know, they've fallen out of the top ten as far as defense. They're now number, no, sorry, 30, 70, yeah, 70. number 13 in the land, uh, averaging 312 yards per game. But, you know, this North Carolina offense is – insane man it's insane. really 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 good and you know what i'm thinking about this and one thing that we don't ever talk about is that north carolina's def- uh, defense their pass defense is outstanding as well so um you know we got to keep that in the back of our brains as well i think they get the job done i think that they can outscore i think they win by a touchdown or more but to be safe get it down to two and a half uh dan what's your thoughts on this game I'm with you 100%. I have them at minus four and a half. I'm okay. not really worried about it. Um, but I also have them in a teaser up to plus five and a half. Okay. So I have them in a 10 point teaser of plus five and a half. Um, but look, you're talking about a North Carolina team. I know they got a scare by Virginia Tech the week before on the road, but they, they have played well on the road. You're talking about a team that beat a very good Pittsburgh team by a touchdown on the road and held them to under 20 points. Um, you know, they beat Georgia Tech on the road by a touchdown this year. So, you know, this this is a team that um, I, I think, you know, their eyes are on the prize, but I don't think they overlooked this game. And I, I think they show NC State, uh, you know, who the, who, the, who the better team in North Carolina is. You're never going to l- overlook a, an in-state rivalry like this. Right. You're not going to overlook right. this. You know what I mean? Especially, I mean, you're probably going to have a lot of lot of their home crowd in the stands as well. Not to mention, like you like to say, kid, you know, you, you got to win impressively. I mean, if North Carolina comes out here and, you know, does something where they, they find a way to win, like, 56-13. Right. You know, and then you find a way. I mean, you know, obviously Clemson is going to be a ridiculously tough game, but... You know, 
you might you, you I mean look if you beat Clemson you you'll probably get in the playoff anyway. But if you make some real noise here that you know you're really showing the committee something. Right, Dream, what's your thoughts? I like North Carolina as well, but be careful um, as they've given up a lot of points as of late. Uh, I don't really like the 30-27 to 27 win last week against uh, Virginia Tech, uh, which I did have them last week. They were they were up two touchdowns at the end. I, no, I know. Yeah, that, I was, know. That, was, that was such a heartbreaking cover. It makes me almost not want to take them. But. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I watched them all week. Um, uh, I had them, um, but, of course, I had a money line. Um but just be careful because NC State, you know, they will put up some points. They're going to put up some points. But I do like North Carolina. I think North Carolina hands down wins. I love them to win this game. Um, I think if you get rid of the points or at least get it under, get it to two and a half, this is this is a very nice game. And it's definitely on my on my plate. North Carolina averaging about 41 points a game. And uh, they're number 18 as far as yards are concerned. 490 yards per game offensively. I just think that they're just they're just too much. I think they're too much for NC State, man. I think I agree with you. Up. And with these games, guys, remember, you know, I talked about the road and the home team thing. In most of these cases, you really don't have that scenario going on because it's an in-state. They're mostly in-state games. So you're going to have as much, uh, you know, as, as many in North Carolina fans as you're going to have NC State fans there at the game. For yeah, the and, you know, the other thing with NC State is, and I think why their defense is falling off, they haven't played any good offense. The one time. They played the best offense they played was Clemson. Clemson put up 56 points on them. Got it. I Got mean, it. you know, you're talking about if you look through the schedule, yeah. nobody. You're right, Dan. You're absolutely right. All right, so, Dream, I'm going to let you pick another one that you're feeling today, man. What other game is on your radar as far as the collegiate slate is concerned? Oh, man, I didn't know I was up. Um, <laughs> let's see. I got to. <laughs> Well, I can we switch over to Dan and come back to you if you want. Kick it over to Dan and come back to me, yep. Dan, what you got? All right. Um, so, I have four games today. My next one, I, I have North Carolina with you. So, All right. I'm with you there. And then my next one is a 730. I'll go with my first 730. All I right. got two of them. Texas A&M plus six. Texas A&M plus six today versus LSU at Les Miles. This is probably his last game, according to all the sources out there in the media. So what do you think? You think they're going to be in turmoil or are they going to be uh, playing for Les Miles if they're feeling them? Uh, I don't I don't think that. I think there's some major issues. I mean, you heard some things leak out about leadership had issues with Les Miles. Yep. So is that team leadership? You know yeah. that that's another that's a dangerous thing. Um, uh, you know, when you're letting go of the coach that has the number one recruiting class yep. coming in the next year, LSU is the number one recruiting class. Okay? Number one, okay. And that's right. And that's really what I mean. That's the point of a college head coach, right? To be a cheerleader and get the best guys come to school. Sure. I think. Look, I have my my major problems with LSU doing this and. Not to get into politics, you know, but hey, you're a public university. Don't be buying out $20 million contracts and paying some other scrub $5 million a year. Like, get real. Yep. Uh, maybe buy some books for, for your kids. But um, I just think that LSU has quit on the season. Um, you know, look, I thought if they were going to bounce back, they were going to bounce back last week. And since I'm sick of getting bit by them, and I, I'm really shocked that they're a six-point favorite here. They are not even uh, in the top 25 right now, brother. No, they, they are not. I mean, you're talking about a team. You know, everybody said how vaunted they were at home at night games. I guess that's a thing of the past because, remember, Arkansas beat the crap out of them. Yep. Um, you know, you just got beat by Ole Miss. You looked terrible. Um, I think Texas A&M coming on, you know, obviously Western Carolina was nothing. But, you know, look, the win at Vandy, 25 nothing. Vandy has no offense. But their defense is pretty good. So, you know, to still put up 25 is, is good. I think they beat LSU on the field today, but I'm, I'll take the plus six and, and roll with it. I also have them at plus 16 as part of that 10-point teaser. All right, sounds good. Dream, any thoughts on that game? Uh, no, I happen to I, – I side with I side with Dan, but I don't like it. It's not a particular game on my board, but I do side with what he's saying. All right, you still need more time? You need me to go? No, I don't. I got. I, we can go to this game. And, uh, my boys out in Tennessee are gonna love this. My boy B Mac and Bobo, who are listed from Tennessee, we talk about these two teams all the time, and that's the dynamic matchup of the in-state rivalry of the Tennessee 
uh, ooh, volunteers and Vanderbilt. Um, we got them going today at four o'clock Eastern Standard Time out in Knoxville, and they will be happy to hear. I'm sure that I am going to roll with Tennessee. As Vanderbilt is definitely not a good team, not no. having a good season at all. They are four and seven. They took a they took a beaten in a half last week by AM, which is another game that I was all over last weekend. Um, I think they win again in sad fashion. I like this Tennessee team to get it done today. Uh, don't give the 18 points. Can't give the 18 points, but you can get this involved in any of your teasers, any of your parlay situation. Get the point spread down. Tennessee rolls today and should be able to beat Vanderbilt in a pretty um pretty they they should still win in impressive fashion and i wouldn't be surprised if they covered the 18 but as we like to always play it safe um especially with like you said a rivalry game don't give the 18 just throw a throw, throw a seven teaser on it and just get that down you know you get that to 11 or 10 you should be all set all right sounds good man sounds good dan any thoughts on that game um it just it just worries me a little bit i mean i i'm with you i think i mean vanderbilt doesn't have anything to play for as a four and seven team. This is the last game of the season for them. But I also feel like even though I know Tennessee's seven and four, I find it a very weak seven and four. Yeah. And even though they're on a four game winning streak, that's against Kentucky, barely beat South Carolina, North Texas, and at Missouri by eleven points. Okay. Um, so I just worry a little bit. I you know, look, if you're gonna money line it, I think Tennessee wins. But um, I, I'm not going near it. Uh, all right. Sounds good. Well, guys, I'm going to ju- jump <clears throat> back into the top 25 because I got something on my radar. And I know, Dream, you're probably going to break my boss to death for saying this. But I'm looking at the 730 start. Number 13, Florida State coming into number 12, Florida. Oh, no. <laughs> stop. Son, I'm not going to stop. You are not getting ready to plug Florida. Florida State minus two and a half with an under over of 43 points. I got a home team underdog on prime time, player. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm I'm plugging the Florida Gators to get out of their shell that they've been in the last couple of weeks and laid a hammer down on Florida State today. This is not prime time as the Notre Dame-Stanford game will be the prime time game, by the way. It's got the same time <laughs> slot, so just keep that in mind. I am looking at the Florida Gators to bounce back and win in impressive fashion today and get the, the job SPN done. Game. Somebody it, get me on the mic with Mythbusters. <laughs> oh, Pat is following really? the trail of the home team dog on prime time. Florida is – I've been saying this for weeks, and their offensive uh, their offensive line and their kicking game stink. I get it. And they what's have the under to, and over in this game, 20? Uh, <laughs> 43, brother, 43. Son, taking a look at this game, man. I look at no, I look at number six Florida as far as their defense is concerned, man. They're, they're definitely one of the most athletic defenses in all of college football. Period. It, 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 there's just week in and week out, the defense has been outstanding. Dream. There, no. That, if, what does that buts- mean? I, I, you keep hitting me with that <laughs> athletic defense. What is okay? So like the other defenses, what are they? They're not athletic. They're not as athletic. <laughs> they're not as athletes out there. To they're have. not as athletic as Florida, man. Florida is like, absolutely outstanding. It, you know, expect like a nine to seven game when they play uh, Alabama as well. Like, what what does Florida's athletics do? Like, they out there doing like um, um jumping um, sum- up in the air, somersaults, and uh, they, like a floor routine. They're <laughs> diving for balls. They're jumping up in the air. They're batting them down. They're diving for uh, running backs that are trying to cut the outside. They're very very good, man. I'm telling you. And at home, oh, yeah. at home, they're six and zero. Oh. They have not lost a game at home yet. And I just don't think Florida State is all that. I think they get the job done and win this game today. Go ahead, Dan. Get him. Uh, <laughs> I can hear I mean, it in your I, voice. I, I actually think you're probably right. Okay. I I think that that oh man, but I don't know how you could want to get involved in this. I don't know if I'm gonna I get involved. If I do, study. it would be it would be like a um an eight point teaser to get him up to ten and a half. But I think they, there's a possibility yeah. of them winning this game outright, man. I think that they're going to bust no, out. No, I, I, I do too. I'm not. Look, I'm not. This is like Brewers Nationals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very impressed with Florida State. I mean, if you look through their schedule, they, you know, they're the one dope team that they played was Clemson. Obviously, at Clemson, they lost by 10. Yep. Um, I mean, Florida's played better teams all year, and I don't know. I mean, ha- good luck. I mean, Florida. I, I uh, 
I think Floyd, look, you get it up to 10, 10 and a half, you're good. Yep. I don't think it's going to get, I, I do not think, just because based on the defense, it gets crazier than that. But I, I think it's going to be a nail biter, so. It's my upset um, special today, brother. It's my upset special today. Yeah, Florida I mean, look, I, I, I think Florida's going to win this game, so. Uh, see, you I just won from my wallet here, on it. Here's my issue, too, though. What's up with the, why, why is Florida State favored? Because Florida's been terrible the last couple of weeks. But but one. I bet. They just look horrible. They've won. Yeah, but, but one. They I shouldn't know. be. They still, you know, it's not, you know, because you look terrible. Okay, so I'm going to make Florida State. The, they haven't, like Dan said, Florida State ain't looked all that awesome either. No, and, I and, and Well, Florida I mean, they beat Chattanooga 52 to 13. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I don't on. think I don't think Florida State should be given points in this particular matchup. Um, uh, this is a heated rivalry. You're gonna get you are you you are biting off a, a huge, definitely go get extra Maalox in Pepto because you are biting off a huge stomach ache of a game. Oh, I agree. That game is gonna be. I can feel the Texas already coming to all this Florida team. Yeah. Um. Good luck, brother. I don't. I, you know what? This is a funny matchup because Florida has been flirting with losing the last couple of weeks. Um, And I got to be honest with you. Florida State is very similarly built like the LSU team is that beat Florida. Um, I I don't like this game. I don't. Yeah, and the other thing that scares you, I mean, Florida lately, if you feel like they're down 9-3, you know, they'll throw that touchdown and go up 10-9. But... You know, against this against this team, you know, that could easily turn into 16-3. And I'm just concerned that if it starts getting a little bit of a way, you know, Florida, if they if they go down double digit, they go down even ten points, they're not coming back. Where's the Florida team that beat the brakes off of Ole Miss at home? That's what I'm expecting today. Maybe. I mean, you know the intensity. They, 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 that's it. That All was right. it. That was, <laughs> they expended it. Hey, at least, I'm, at least, I'm, picking, at, at least I'm picking some marquee games, guys. That's all I got to say about that. Yeah, I, I got a marquee. <laughs> well, no, we, oh, you didn't go there. Go, <laughs> dream, I'm, waiting, I, I, I'm waiting for the dream. I'm, marquee, <laughs> you didn't go there. I'm waiting for the dream to pick a Mac game next. <laughs> <laughs> I'm caperish this morning. <laughs> Dream, dreams, dreams, picking uh, Akron to win today. No doubt, I'm caperish. <laughs> I'm about to break down the Fresno State, Colorado State game. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, let's see the other games New we got Mexico going. Mexico Air Force. <laughs> Dream, I, I, I got one for you. Heather. What do you got? What do you got, Dan? I'm on. Come on. Thing seven thirty. The game that Dream alluded to earlier. Notre Dame plus three and a half. All Obviously. right. All right. Number six, Notre Dame, 10 and one coming into nine and two. Stanford, who is number nine in all the land, five and one at home. And Stanford is minus three and a half with an under over of 56.5. Dan, take it away. Take it away. Yeah. So it's Notre Dame. I mean, Notre Dame has looked, I mean, look, you know, they didn't look great against Boston College, but I think that's a classic look ahead. And as we've said all year, BC's defense. Might be one of the most underrated in the country. Oh, yeah, big time. Big time. Um, you know, this is a Notre Dame team. Their only loss, obviously, two points on the road to Clemson. Yep. They beat a good Temple team. They basically blew out a really good Pittsburgh team um, on the road. So, you know, th- this is a team that I think is tested. I think they go in there. You know, Notre Dame has been in this position a million times. I think they have the better coach. I think they have the better skill set of players right now. And, um, look, I think this game is going to come down to the very, very end. But plus three and a half, I got, I got to go with that. Wow. I don't think there's no, way, there's no way they lose by more than a field goal. Dream, I think you're on the other side of that, aren't you? I am on the other side, and I do not think that Notre Dame has the better coach by no, no way, shape, or form. Uh, if you want to call them even... I can swallow that. Um, if you want to say, if you know, if you want to say the coaches are even, I can go there with you. But I do think that the Stanford coach is a little bit better um, as far as coaching. I think he's better than the Notre Dame coach. That's, but the, obviously, that's personal opinion. Um, I like Stanford in this spot. Um, I like Stanford's defense. Stanford's defense um, has shown, you know, they've been a bend but don't break type of defense for most of the season. Uh, I think this will hold through, but I think that Stanford's defense will give Notre Dame's offense a lot of fits. Um, 
They're very good against the pass, as you see them contain Cal um, last week uh, in the 35-22 to 22, uh, game against Cal. Uh, they were right there with Oregon and, and weren't able to, to get that win, so they can do it on the offensive end as well. Um, I think that Stanford is a lot better well-rounded team than Notre Dame personally um, and as far as both sides of the ball being very, you know, very good. Uh, and I like Stanford to win this game. Very, very much mirror images of each other, guys. I'm still shocked that you said that David Shaw is a better coach than, than Kelly. I, I said uh, no. I said that they. I said even, I could give him even. even yeah. But I, I do give well, the, Shaw the nod. I, I do. I give Shaw the nod because I mean, taking over that program after Harbaugh and having the success that he that he's had and keeping it on the level. To, it's that. I mean, that's that's a lot. I mean, Kelly came into like he could do what he wanted at Notre Dame because he came into a mess. Okay, so he didn't really have the same kind of. The, the, I mean, obviously the, the standards are high because you're, you're coaching Notre Dame, but they knew that they were giving him a team that was screwed up. So I mean, he had a lot of you know a lot of longitude or latitude to work with. Uh, uh, Shaw didn't have the same type of the, the same type of longitude and latitude. He had a winning program with a high profile coach that left, and he had to come behind him and hold his own. And I think he does. He's done an excellent job doing that. Oh, and, and look, no, and I, I. I like David Shaw, I just think that um, I just think that I'm looking at who's battle tested. I think Kelly is, you know, a little, a little more. Um, you know, he's been around longer. And look, David Shaw is a very, very smart guy. I mean, he's incredibly intelligent. He knows how to get the best from his players. And he and you're also, right, Casey. He looks like Talik from Stargate One. <laughs> oh, you know what? You know what? You're. You're kind of right. <laughs> I'm absolutely right. I put the two of them together. I always, every time I see him, I'm like, that's the dude from Stargate. <laughs> but anyway, off of that for a second, Notre Dame wants to run the ball as they're averaging 207 yards on the ground. Okay, but Stanford's run defense is one of the best in the country. They only give up 131 yards rushing. So if Notre Dame is, I believe, that they're going to get stuffed on the run and not be able to run, and that will be the recipe for issues because when Notre Dame has to put the ball in the air, um, it just it – just, eh, it's, I it's guess, but my thing with that stat and that is that, um, you know, the pack throws the ball all the time. Right. They're not – you know, they're not really built to run the ball. I don't know. I mean, I think it's going to be a very entertaining game. Um I just I think that Notre Dame will be able to run the ball, will be able to move it. I think you know the quarterback is comfortable. Um, you know, hey, we'll we'll see what happens. And but, uh, Notre Dame is uh, back. They're down to their backup running back, Josh Adams, who's going to get the start today. So uh, take a look at their uh, injury report, guys. It's pretty damn long for uh, Notre Dame, where Stanford's is not. Stanford's pretty damn healthy for this game, so keep that in the back of your brains. Notre Dame's played with injuries all year. I yeah. feel like, you know, same things have popped up. Got it. Got it. All right. Um, Christian McCaffrey, keep your eyes on him as he is all that in a bag of chisips. All right. Sounds good, man. <laughs> Sounds good. So, uh, you guys have any others? Dream, I'm going to let you go. And uh, if not, then we got to talk about the big game at 8 o'clock. Nope. Let's get right into the big game, player. Let's talk about Bedlam, guys. We've Bedlam. got number three, Oklahoma, going into Stillwater to face the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Oklahoma Just State, jumped to seven and a half. Uh, Oklahoma State is number 11. This game actually started at three and a half, Dan. I was able to uh, make some magic happen with the three and a half as far as the money line is concerned. But now it's all the way up to yeah, seven. Yeah, that was before they announced all the dudes from Oklahoma are playing. Yeah, right? everybody is healthy for Oklahoma. The Sooners, man. The Sooners looking to uh, punch their ticket into the top four playoffs, man. And uh, taking a look at them, you know, being a seven and a half point favorite bothers me a little bit. <clears throat> Especially the fact that Oklahoma State, I mean, coming off the loss, they got to be hungry as hell. I think Oklahoma wins this game. I think Baker Mayfield has an outstanding day versus that pretty rough Oklahoma State defense. I just think that it's a tough spot for them. Uh, Dream, I'm going to let you start off and I'll kick it over to Dan. What's your thoughts on Bedlam? Yeah, my thoughts on Bedlam is just that it is going to be Bedlam, um, especially for the Oklahoma State defense as they are one of the be one of the worst defenses. Um, I, you know, I talked about this with you on the phone. You know it, what would be dope is if we could get like – the Big 12 and the SEC to merge into one team. Like, like imagine if you could have, you know what I'm saying? If you could have Bama and Baylor merge, yeah, right? right. 
<laughs> How dope would that team be? They would be undefeated for like 10 years. You know what I'm saying? It's like the Big 12 has nothing but offensive and the, and the SEC has nothing but defense teams. Yeah, right. It's like, why can't and either one of these guys, why can't they recruit one of the quarterbacks that the Big 12 manages to come up with? But anyway, that being said, Oklahoma State's defense is just as bad as it gets. Um, This Oklahoma team uh, should – have no problem scoring on this on, on Oklahoma State's defense. And then on their on the defensive side, Oklahoma's defense should be very good and they should be able to stop Oklahoma State for those one to two to three stops that they need to get them a, a comfortable lead. The only question mark in this game obviously is where is the Oklahoma quarterback uh, as far as his injury and his concussion, where is he? I mean, he, at? he was, he was, you know, college is just as cautious, I feel like, as the NFL. Yeah, they, they, they pulled him out any. just for precautionary measures. No doubt, but my thing is, where is his site? Psych- like, because just, dude, think about this for a second. Um, You guys, I, you know, we've all played the game. You get hurt. Yeah, you're back in the game. You're good. But it's still in the back of your mind that you've been hurt. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to know where his psyche is. Uh, I don't want him playing tentative. Uh, you know, you just got to, you just always wonder about that, especially when you need a guy to stand in the pocket and take that hit to deliver that ball. You want him to stand in the pocket and not say, okay, I'm throwing it early because I'm not taking well, the Well, he, he's really lucky that he gets to play Oklahoma State, who doesn't rush the passer it's or cover. Yeah, right. Exactly. So, you know, um, I don't know how, I don't know how many stacks that they've actually had this year, but uh, I don't. I don't think that they've been able to really uh, get after the quarterback. And let's also remember, this is a payback game for Oklahoma. Oklahoma last year was number 18 in the country going into this game. Remember, they would have gotten a big-time bowl game, and Oklahoma State beat them, um, you know, in Norman. Yep. So, I think Oklahoma does have the, uh, the better team overall. Yep. I expect it to be a high scoring game. I haven't decided if I'm gonna play it yet. Um, because once you know, once everything was announced, you know, I obviously wasn't gonna play the game until I knew anything about Baker Mayfield, even though I thought he was gonna play, but I couldn't take that chance. Yep. Uh, but we'll we'll see where we're at today. But I, I definitely have a strong lean to Oklahoma. Yeah, I mean it, the definitely the superiority here is defense as far as Oklahoma yes. versus Oklahoma State. I mean, offensively, you know, they could probably exchange uh, touchdowns here and there, but Oklahoma, once you get into that secondary where, you know what I mean, they force, you know, one three and out or two three and outs or something like that, they could take this game by, you know, take the bull by the horns in this game, and I think they'll get the job done and win this game. I just don't know. I, I just think it's a it's a rough spot, and it might well, be Oklahoma something. Well, Oklahoma State's never out of a game with their offense either. No, definitely not, but I, do, I can say this. That we saw it last week versus Baylor. If Oklahoma State falls down, you know, seventeen to twenty-one points versus Oklahoma, you're you're facing a superior defense than you did for, with Baylor. So I think Oklahoma can, you know, keep them keep the foot on the jugular all the way till the uh, the clock hits zeros in this particular game. Yeah, I mean, and you know, last time these two teams were ranked this highly was yep. 2011. Oklahoma State, remember, was number three, and Oklahoma was number ten. Oklahoma State won that game 44-10. Very similar. I mean, Oklahoma's number three and uh, Oklahoma State is number that. 11 right now, guys. So uh, we'll keep that right. in the back of their brains. This one is in Stillwater at 8 o'clock tonight. So that's pretty much it for me as far as the college football, guys. Do you guys have anything else on your tickets? Um, no, I mean, they, I, I, this is kind of a little bit crazy. I'm kind of thinking about teasing Oklahoma with Air Force. Air fizzle, man. They've been good. I know, I know, but they're they're minus ten and a half. So if I can, you know, get that down to ten before kick, you know, before the eight o'clock kicks off. But that that's the only other thing I'm co- possibly considering, and maybe Connecticut. All right, all right, sounds good. And hey, Dream, uh, you're good, right? I'm good. All right, sounds Dream, good. You're, you're gonna play Connecticut plus twelve with me. I don't know, man. I'm trying to because I just Temple. Connecticut is so sneakily good, um, and I, I'm trying to, to to talk myself into it. But you know, Connecticut's one of those teams. Like for me, like whenever I pl- like like I can't bet against them or I can't bet with them. So I feel like I just need to just keep away from them, like I've been for the most of the season. Yeah, I might I might just if I do some of them, I might get them up to plus twenty two. Okay. okay. Versus Temple. You know, yeah, do something like that. And by the way, guys, I just got to say this real quick because it's the most hideous thing. The Padres look like they're bringing back their 1970s uniforms. 
Nice. The mustard yellow oh, we brown. Needed that. We, need, we needed to hear about that this morning. <laughs> hey, you know, I just had to Go do look it, Doc. Dream. Go then, look you it. Know, I, know, I know you're so interested, Dream. Let's do a baseball set. I, I got to get out there. Get hey, one Dan, of them Hey, Dan, Dan, I know, I know he will be interested in baseball on uh, Mets opening day. <laughs> uh, by the way, keep in mind for the uh, Michigan, the Michigan um, Ohio State game, um, Lloyd Carr lost his, uh, I think it's his grandson. Okay. Um, so there's going to be obviously a, it's going to be a big, you know, a big emotional day there. Um, I believe, I believe it's his 15 month old. Um, oh, that sucks. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a, a young child, and I don't know all the dynamics of it, but you guys, the stories. It's I mean, it's it, it dropped like it started yesterday. Uh, it was on the TV. I got a little couple bits and pieces of it, but I didn't get the whole thing. Yeah, but I his, believe uh, so. It was his five year old. Uh... Five-year-old grandson who unfortunately passed away due to a non-operable brain tumor. Um, you know, there's no, I mean, we're all fathers. No doubt. There's, there's nothing that can be said. Uh, no. It's the most terrible thing that you could ever imagine for a family to go through. So, you know, wish them nothing but the best. Right, and, and he still has strong best. ties to the Michigan community. Oh, so, I mean, he, right. he, he is a, I mean, a pillar of that community. Right. And, um you know, hopefully he can take some solace in that and, you know, get his spirits picked up a little bit, even though in the scheme of things, you know, what's a game. But uh, definitely, you know, Michigan, every kid knows about who Lloyd Carr is. If they don't know going into the program, they know once they're there um, and they're going to want to fight for him. So I, I definitely think that, you know, on the other side where you got Ohio State, you know, fighting and bickering and doing all that, you know, child stuff, you have Michigan that, you know, maybe thinks that they have a higher purpose today. Coming okay. together. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. So, Sounds you know, hey, um, best of the family, though. It's a terrible thing. All right, guys. Uh, just real quick on this uh, UConn team. I mean, the fact that they're number f- – <laughs> they're, they're one of the worst offensive teams in all of the land. So yeah, they won a game solely on defense. Yeah, year. I know. I know. I'm, yeah, exactly. They just they scored on defense. <laughs> 7-3, baby. Unbelievable. So that does it for me for college football, guys. Yes, sir. I don't see anything else that I'm feeling. But, uh, Dream, you got anything else as far as uh, any of the other sports that you'd like to share with the audience the last few minutes that we're on the air? Yep, let's go in and take a look. Uh, over on the hardwood, we have... Oh, 8 minus 15, why not? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, we have... I don't like any hoop. What about Portland? I see them. Don't like it, though. Um... I don't. I mean, I don't love it, but I have, obviously you like you got like Portland. I don't love it. I don't. The hoops doing nothing for me right now. Get get some um, get some Cleveland Cavs facing Brooklyn, son. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, but you know, you know that's an ugly game that that's the Cavs not, will end up yeah, probably the, losing by two points. No, they'll be no. Here's what's gonna happen. They'll be down at the half, yep. and then they'll come out and cover the spread at the end. Yeah, exactly. That's 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 what that's See, what, what, the, what I think you do. What I think you do is if you want to play the hardwood, you put together a seven point teaser. Yep. With Portland minus one and a half, Golden State minus eight, and and your boy minus three. Okay, just mo- just money line parlay all three. Don't even yeah, or or you do that. Yeah, yeah and, I don't. And then I don't add like, North Carolina to it, and I think you're yeah. good. We talked about that with the teaser situation in basketball. It's just not the same as with football, so I really don't get into those. Um, but I don't like the basketball tonight, guys. Yeah, uh, but I think the basketball teasers can be good though. As far as the hockey is concerned, I do like. The Rangers got the Flyers coming into town. Rangers coming off a loss yesterday to the Bruins yeah. uh, in a hard-fought game. I do like the Rangers to bounce back against this Flyers team that is as bad as it gets um, in hockey. I like the Rangers in his spot at home uh, to get back to their winning yeah, ways. Yeah, Rangers have lost two in a row. I, I, I would agree with you there. I think they get back to it. I like that. I like the Rangers. Think that's something and you about. got Smashville at home against that Saber team. I have picked on them in, in one. I have picked on them in loss. Um, I mean, I really like the Rangers. Um, and it's got a 130 start, so it's something that you may be able to add in some of your uh in, in your in 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 a parlay, which I have a very, very nice money line parlay, actually. Okay. Um that I'm thinking of right now, and it's gonna be the Rangers, West Virginia. And North Carolina money line parlay uh, probably pays very nicely, uh, and sounds like that would be a, a pretty 
pretty nice spot to get your day started with. So okay. keep that yeah. in mind, guys, for the day. As far as the other hockey's concerned, um, I talked about Canadians losing their goalie uh, price for a few weeks. He's not going to be in there. So keep that in mind. I mean, know they still managed to get that win yesterday, even without him in the game. But uh, I'd be careful moving forward. Um, well, as Con far as Condon, that's Condon, their backup is not bad. No, not bad at all. But just you know, keep that in your you know keep that in the back of your pocket. Um, as as some goals are going to be scored against him. Uh, uh I do kind of lean there very lightly, and I lean Smashville very lightly, and that would be it. All right, sounds good. Sounds good. Dan, yeah, Dan, anything else from you? Yeah, um, a couple things that I'm looking at actually. I'm on sorry. The I'm sorry. I'm sorry. One more. One more. I'm sorry. I like the Penguins as well. The Penguins got the Oilers coming into town. The Penguins as well is a nice spot. So if you want to just keep the hockey together, I would go Rangers, Penguins, Moneyline Par. There you go. There you go. Dan, what you got? Yeah, so uh, back to the hardwood, but the uh, college ticket. So today, I think you see, um, I think you see Georgetown finally be able to bust out against Bryant. So that spread is 24, but uh, you have Bryant coming off um, a, what, 35-point loss to Harvard. So, I look, I know Georgetown's 1-3, and three, um, and they, they haven't looked great, but they did find a way to beat Wisconsin. I just think that, you know, hey, look, they lost to Duke by two, um, and Maryland by four. You can't fault that. And the Radford game, I don't even know if they played anybody. That was like a preseason thing. So I think that uh, Georgetown comes out and smashes Brian today. 24 points is fine. And then the other thing to look at, too, is um, VCU um, is playing Old Dominion. That, that line is 7.5. Um, I, I like that as well. Okay. All right. College Hoop, we had a hiccup yesterday with the uh, with the Syracuse game. I was dead on with Villanova and Michigan State, uh, but we got the hiccup with the Syracuse game yesterday. I really thought a and was going to be able to beat that that zone that Syracuse runs. Uh, they didn't down the stretch. They did not do. They did not come as expected. But um, um, Villanova and uh, Michigan State handled their business in serious fashion. Sparty's pretty good. Yeah, Sparty's pretty good. All right, guys, so that's pretty much going to do it. What I'm going to do is bounce around and let you guys recap, and uh, we'll get the hell out of here and get ready because the games start in one hour, man. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to let you start off, Dan, and then I'll go over to the Dream, and then we will let me finish it off. What do you got, Dan? Yeah, so I'm going to uh, I'm gonna roll with a couple things here today. For the college football ticket, we're going to roll West Virginia minus 14, North Carolina minus 4.5, Notre Dame plus three and a half, A and M plus six, but we're also ten point teasing those. So you got uh, Carolina up to five and a half, Notre Dame plus thirteen and a half, and A and M plus sixteen. And then on the college hoop ticket, Georgetown minus twenty four and VCU minus seven and a half. All right, and we might go Golden State later. I'm not sure. Okay, Dream, what you want? Uh, I am on. I'm going to start off this morning with, uh, I'm liking a two-team money line parlay. I like University of North Carolina, and I like West Virginia uh, in a two-team college football, two-team money line parlay. Um, it pays just under even money, okay. just under even money. Um, I like that to start my day off. Uh, as the day progresses, I'll, I'll move in some other directions. I also have a slight lean towards Michigan. Don't know how I'm going to quite play that yet because I do like the under in that game as well. Yes. Not sure if I'm going to go first half or I'm going to go full game. So I'm trying to make up my mind on that. As I just mentioned, I do like the hockey parlay, two-team money line parlay, Rangers, Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, and that's probably going to be where I'm at today. Guys, I do like also Stanford this evening, but most of this stuff is not. It's, uh, I'm going to you know get involved and play throughout the day. So uh, as I go, uh, we'll, we'll let you know maybe on Twitter via DM. Uh, and if you don't hear from me, it means I'm, I'm probably not on it um, as I'm mixed. So that's where I'm starting off with this morning, and that's where I'm, the direction I'm going. All right, guys. I am feeling North Carolina, the Tar Heels, to uh, get all up in NC State and win the game. I'm feeling the Michigan State um, Spartans as well to win as far as uh, – beating up on Penn State at 330. I'm leaning Michigan as far as just to win that particular game, but it's going to be tight and financially. I'm probably not going to get involved in it, and I'm feeling the Florida Gators, and I'm going to probably get that up to three and a half as they are a home team underdog on prime time, and I'm liking the uh, New York Rangers as well, guys. 
So that's pretty much it. Dream, who's retweeting the show? Hey, I want to thank everybody out there that's retweeted our show and got up this Saturday morning and listened to us uh, before you get into your turkey omelets. Yes. <laughs> C. Rodriguez Jr., Jim Rome is a douche. The Tip Talkers out there, JDH24, Wayne Yarborough, MCG86, Lexka. We got the beautiful queen of odds out there retweeting us. Rick Lopez, good to see you out there, my boy Rick. Long Woo, Key MVU. We got Sir Mata out there, my man Slick Nick Orestes. Nick, hope you're doing well. Keep that fight, brother. Keep it going. Do not give up because you will overcome. Irvin is out there. Nicholas J. Immaculate. Pete for presence out there. A.B. Lynn. Jeff Ryan. My boy O.J.F. Bizzle always in the house. We got J.C. out there. MC Money. Uh, we got Direct Sport Solution. When we want to thank them again for their support and getting us uh, our Houston connection out there on KCOH, which we always have some fun with as well. Uh, Sin City Maverick is out there. Sorak King J. Woots GG. And the ever-present Vegas girl. 92661. Guys. I am the dream. Always remember who you're with. Make the most of each and every day. You cannot get this time back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Guys, we love you to death. Go out there. Go easy. Do your own homework. Get involved in your own plays. Make all your dreams a damn reality and get that money. Let's go. Peace.